there are challenges to not only the the accounts obviously in scripture but various individuals mentioned in scripture are often challenged as to whether or not they they actually existed today uh you know i i never i thought i would see the day when someone would would say to me uh well you know king david and king solomon really didn't exist in history and their and their their kingdom didn't exist um what do we say about those kinds of uh statements when people just dismiss uh, accounts like uh, King David and his life and, and all that he did, how do we respond to those kinds of, those kinds of accusations? Because those things come against us and we, 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 we hear them and we, we're shocked when someone says that these individuals never existed. There's an inscription, Gary, isn't there? Uh, it's a couple of inscriptions that have been discovered uh, with the name of David on them. Yeah. And you know about that, don't you? <clears throat> Well, again, this, this old axiom in archaeology, the absence of evidence is not necessarily evidence of absence. People said we have no ancient writings that are contemporary with the time of David that David ever existed. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says he existed, but we have no evidence that David existed. So at the site of Tel Dan in northern Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, the, the northern city of Tel Dan, at the site of Tel Dan, the archaeologists were excavating. They found the city, city wall, city gate, and somebody found a stone in, in a, later, a later wall, that had, a stone that had been reused, and it was broken, but it had some writing on it. Mm -hmm. So they found that stone, found a couple other pieces, put them all together, and it was an ancient monument written by an Aramean king, and he describes defeating the king of Israel, that's the quote, the king of Israel, and the house of David. Mm -hmm. Well, at that time in history, there were two kingdoms, northern kingdom, southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was called Israel. The southern kingdom was called Judah, which was the family of David, the house of David. Well, there's an evidence of David from just after the time that David lived. An archaeologist said, well, we understand it says king of Israel, that's Israel, but it says house of David, it doesn't really mean the David in the Bible. In fact, they said the word David is translated beloved. So it, does, it says that this king defeated the king of Israel and the house of beloved. House of beloved, who would that be? Mm -hmm. Well, somebody else said, well, you could translate the word David as uncle. So they defeated the king of Israel and house of uncle. Uncle who? <laughs> Another scholar said, well, actually the word could be translated kettle. Defeated the king of Israel and the house of kettle. Kettle? Yeah. Why can't it just say David, which is exactly what it says. So amazingly, there's this inscription that talks about the two kingdoms, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah, the family or the house of David. There it is, just less than 150 years after David lived, and scholars still, some, still accept, still refuse to accept that David actually existed. Yeah, and it shows that the power of skepticism, what it will yeah. do. Here you have evidence, but, the, but skepticism is going to pull that evidence and make it into nonsense. Yeah. Because anyone who looks at this and understands what this is, this inscription is, is going to logically, normally conclude, this is talking about David, the David in the Bible. What's interesting to me, too, is this This is a, an inscription from not from someone in Israel, but from a foreign power who's acknowledging that the kings of Israel are of David's lineage. Yeah. So they know. There's an acknowledgement. It's not somebody uh, in Israel trying to justify the Bible or the history of David, but someone outside of Israel. And so the evidence is even more powerful on that, that the enemies of Israel knew that the kings were descended from King David, and they knew he was a real person who lived in a real time and a real place. Yeah. Now, are there, are there other evidences for David's existence and his kingdom? Well, it turns out that there are actually two other inscriptions that use that same phrase, House of David, which of course is biblical. I mean, that's mm -hmm. the uh, reference that's used for the kings of Judah. They descended from David. Uh, there's an inscription in Egypt, uh, and 
it's a later time period. It's the time of uh, Pharaoh Shishak who invaded uh, Israel mm -hmm. and listed all the uh, places he defeated. And one place that uh, he mentions in there uh, is uh, uh, the name David appears mm -hmm. along with this place name. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there's another inscription found in Jordan, the Mesha inscription uses mm -hmm. the same phrase, House of David, in uh, reference to the kings of Judah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's interesting, when this uh, Tel Dan inscription was found, and scholars began taking a closer look at these other inscriptions, they found that same phrase. So we have it not once, but now three, three times. It's amazing. <laughs> three different languages yeah. from three different countries Absolutely. talk about a real historical person, David, and yet in the 21st century, there are still some scholars who say, I don't really think we know there was a David. <laughs> yeah, the argument from silence. Yes. Yeah. I was thinking uh, from, a, from a New Testament perspective, from the Christian perspective, uh, not just the importance of, of the Bible itself being accurate and us trusting its authority that God has spoken and acted in history, but uh, Jesus himself, who we've put our, our faith in for our salvation, is called the son of David and comes from David's lineage in his human ancestry. So the importance of this uh, seems obvious for, 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 for believers. It's more, more obvious in terms of, of the implications if David is not a real person. Uh, what does that say for uh, Jesus' uh, title, son of David, which he's called in the New Testament? And he has conversations about yeah. David in yeah. the New Testament. And that would call into question the honesty of the writers of the New Testament. It would call into question Jesus' own integrity. Yes. Uh, he didn't even know who he was and he couldn't even understand history. Uh, so these, these are, are, are serious uh, issues that develop out of the denial of the David of history. But we have evidence for David and that's extremely important. Uh, for us to, to emphasize that. And people need to know that. When you read the Bible, you can trust the Bible. When it talks about David, when it talks about Solomon, you can trust that they indeed existed. And so this whole, the whole struggle we have about myths, the Bible being full of myths and exaggerations, uh, so much of this stuff is being fueled by people who just do not, it, it's not just that they don't believe, but they don't want to believe that those things are there. And so uh, I think uh, many times uh, the work of archaeology ends up uh, really uh, irritating some people <laughs> because they don't really want to believe that it's true.